Hi, I'm Dr. Christina O'Malley, and this is Better Science Teaching. On today's episode of Science Fair Friday, I want to talk to you about a really simple idea that's really important for how you lay out your project and then how you communicate about it. It's this question of, are you doing a scientific method experiment or are you doing engineering design? There's a couple substantial reasons why you want to know if you're doing the scientific method or if you're doing engineering design. Because what's gonna happen as you work through your project is it really helps you focus on which steps you need to worry about. And it also helps you when you get to the point where you're going to share your project, both in terms of how you're gonna present it to your judges, how you're gonna write about it. And in some cases, in some states, even how you register your project for the science fair. Here in the state of Ohio, uh, you'll be asked that during your registration process. And part of that is because if you choose either of those categories, then the judges that come and see you are going to evaluate you based on whether you say that you did a scientific method project or an engineering design project. Most simply stated, the scientific method is asking a question and answering it by performing an experiment with defined variables. It means that what you've done is identified a question that you have and you've laid out uh, an experimental process in order to determine an answer to it. By contrast, engineering design is solving a problem by creating a product or a prototype and evaluating that product against a set of goals. So what that means is that you've identified a problem and in order to solve it, you have certain things that you're gonna to need to be able to do. And then you're gonna generate a product or a prototype that's gonna be able to solve those things. So we're gonna compare some of the different steps here in the engineering design process and the scientific method process so that you can test your idea against which one um, you think you have. So for the scientific method, you'll ask a question. For the engineering design process, what you'll be doing is defining a problem. And for both of those cases, you need to make sure that you understand what each word in your question or your problem means. And so sometimes uh, when students come to me and they have an idea for their problem or question, and I'll say, well, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by this? What do you mean by this? And the idea there is to really narrow down the focus of what your, what your idea really is. The second step for both the scientific method and engineering design is identical. It's background research. We talked about this a little bit, both when we were discussing brainstorming and when we were discussing literature search. Um, in both of those cases, doing your background research, super important. For the scientific method, what you wanna know is what's already known about the question that you've asked. And you need to identify as much information as you can about what your question is actually asking, has someone else already asked it, what have other scientists found, and basically you're going to be building on top of that knowledge. For engineering design projects, what you want to know is has your problem already been solved? Is there something that already does the thing you want to do? If, if, the, if it is, if it has been invented, don't worry about it. Take a look at that invention and see if you think it should have a different set of goals. That can also lead to a really productive project. For the third step in the scientific method, what you're gonna do is come up with a hypothesis. You're gonna look at your question and the background research that you've done, and you are going to make a statement on how you think that question will be answered. Um, it's, a, it's a step where you're making a prediction as another way to think about a hypothesis. Um, you may also encounter things like null hypothesis. Like, well, if your hypothesis isn't true, then what would the result be? Um, and think about, what the alternatives are to your hypothesis. It's okay to have more than one question, by the way. For a single project, I would make sure that they're related. Um, otherwise, you may be looking at something that's a multi-year project and just shelve your ideas for later. You can also have more than one hypothesis and that's okay too. If you're looking at something that has multiple variables, you may have multiple hypotheses and that's fine. For engineering design, what you're gonna do, um, after you've defined your problem and you've done your background research, what you're gonna do is write the goals that you have for the product that you're gonna produce. So my recommendation to my students is always that you make things that are measurable. You don't want it to be something like, you know, if you need to build a robot that shoots basketballs. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to create a robot that does that, you're not gonna say, robot can throw the ball. You're gonna say something like, the robot can throw the ball a distance of, a certain distance with a certain amount of accuracy, and then you're gonna measure the distance and the accuracy. And so that's gonna be a way um, that you can get actual numbers to attach to each of your prototypes. Yes, <laughs> each prototype. Um, instead of saying things like, yes, it could do it. No, it couldn't do it. 
um, because that's going to be more informative to you. you eventually you're going to need to be able to decide which prototype was better at certain things and so having yes and no isn't as informative um, and it doesn't really take that much work to write goals that are measurable <clears throat> cover that more later uh, the fourth step is for the scientific method you're going to do an experiment so once you have your question you've done some background research you have your hypothesis you're going to think about what your experiment is going to be and set up your variables and then carry out that experiment to collect data if you're doing engineering design process once you've written your goals your next step is to develop a product now i would highly encourage you for, for each of these steps make sure that you're taking great notes in your scientific notebook because that's gonna be your evidence that those ideas are your own and you wanna make sure that that's as complete as possible. The fifth step for the scientific method is analysis and its counterpart in engineering design is gonna be testing your solution. So once you've, once you've built your prototype in engineering design, you're going to evaluate it based on the goals that, that you set forward and you're gonna measure its performance. If you're doing a scientific method project, you're gonna take the data that you collected during your experiment, you're gonna analyze it. It's important there to think about statistics and you wanna make sure they're age appropriate. If you're a teacher or a parent and you're watching this, um, don't, don't expect elementary kids to do high school level statistics if they, if they can't do them themselves. It's one of those things that becomes a red flag for judges. Um, you don't want it to be, you don't want students to pursue statistics that are more difficult than their understanding level. Um, high school kids, you know, we have a little bit more access to statistics teachers and older siblings and sometimes older college students siblings. Um, we have people who understand statistics a little bit better and are better at dealing with those. For elementary kids, you know, you're looking at things like minimums and maximums, averages, that kind of thing. And that's fine. Um, but both of those steps are related because what you're doing is evaluating the data that you've been able to collect to see how you're performing and see if you've actually found a solid answer to your question or to your problem. Next for scientific method is conclusions. Once you've done that analysis, you can start to make statements about whether or not your hypothesis was correct. If, if you're an engineering designer and you take a look at your first set of results, you may notice that your prototype could be better. This is important. If you're doing an engineering design project, don't make a set of goals, develop a prototype, and then evaluate it. You want to make sure that you make some changes to see if you can improve on the performance of the thing that you've created. Um, the most successful engineering projects that I've seen at Science Fair Projects are those that go through several iterations of that process, where students build, usually they call it prototype one. It's incredibly creative, right? But it's really effective because when you're talking to a student, they can then talk about their projects in an order that makes sense. You could say prototype one performed in this way. So I made these modifications and prototype two uh, performed hopefully better than prototype one. Um, last step, and this is important for both categories, is your, is, is your communicate results. Um, what I tell students is that if you're not communicating your results, your project may as well have never happened because it's never gonna be entered into, into scientific literature. So science fair generally isn't, isn't something that's gonna be promoted to the public. Um, but science fairs do generally have viewing times where people can come in. I've seen collaborations happen between students and professors, students and college students. Um, I, have, I have also had students who have been very successful in using their projects as a launching point to working in local university labs, um, submitting them to our Academy of Science uh, and doing all sorts of other endeavors with them. So it's important to do those things. Um, and, and there's similarities between the two. If, if you start in one category and you realize, you know, like, hey, I was doing this project and I thought it was gonna be scientific method project, but I think it would be really better as an engineering project, you know what? There's no rules, switch sides. Um, I've had students who start out on either side and end up flipped around in the other one. The other thing that's kind of an interesting, the other thing that's kind of an interesting point about this is that you can have projects that are about engineering that are actually scientific method projects. Things that fall into that are usually things where students are testing a certain bridge design. So like when they're looking at trusses is a pretty common one or different kinds of electrical systems sometimes pops up. But where students are testing 
um, competing theories about how something could be constructed. And then they actually build those things and test them for things like how well can they hold load? Do they twist when you put load on them? All uh, those sorts of things. And so you would look at it and you would think, oh, this is an engineering, you know, like they're building something, but, but really it probably should be a scientific method project. Um, the other, the other kind of similar trap is, you know, if somebody says, can you build a better paper plate? Or something. If, if you're saying like, can you build a better something, you're doing engineering design. Um, if you're saying what would happen if you're probably doing scientific method. So I didn't want to get involved in all the details and downstream what that means for your project. I just wanted to help give you the opportunity to think about, okay, well, which one do I have and how do I sort that out? Because that will, that will be important for future Science Fair Friday episodes. So I, I hope that that helps you to figure out where you're at. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm happy to interact with everybody who's watching. I hope that you stay safe and you be well and you make good choices. I'll see you soon.